So hello and welcome. It's nice of you to take the time. And am I pronouncing your name right as Bere? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Hello. My name is Bere. My Mongolian name is very long. Bere Tisik. Oh, my Bere. It's a beautiful name. <laughs> it's the name of flower. Yes. Of a flower? Yes. Oh, what does the flower look like? Uh, it's a... Um, it's a um, it's a, uh, announced in Mongolia one of the pride pride of Mongolian national flower, and oh, okay. it, it has a purple color, and it kind of symbolizes the love of the couples or something like that. <laughs> oh, wonderful! Well, we'll have to see a picture of it at some point. So, but it sounds a so it's your national flower and it's purple. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice. So if you can, just tell us a little bit about you and um, just a little bit about your background. Now, I know some of it, but for our viewers, they don't. So if you can just tell us a little bit about maybe where you grew up and what made you decide to make the changes in your life that you've made. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so um, I'm a, a mother of three girls. My daughters are two and a half and five years and mm -hmm. 12 years old, three girls. And um, I was born in the countryside in a nomad family, um, so which is um, 1,000 uh, kilometers from the capital city. And I grew up in um, my, my family's original herder, and I grew up there and I started um, secondary school high school and uh, just I finished my um, high school and I, I came to the city. So um, I have seven other supplies and I'm a middle of, of them. And when I was uh, seven years old, my father passed away because of the uh, lack of doctors who can treat his uh, tooth. And at that time I was only, yes, yes. Oh. So we were so isolated from the uh, village, and we we had only one doctor, and uh, he wasn't come. He, kept, he couldn't come to to get um, uh, to deliver services. So my uh, father passed away at that time. My older brother was fifth grade, I think, thirteen years old, and the younger one only five months in my, uh, my mother's, uh, yeah, unborn, unborn child, five months I'm pregnant. So wow. my, so your mom was, was five months pregnant and your dad had passed away yes. from an abscess in his tooth, not being taken care of? Yes. Oh, that's so sad. I'm and sorry to hear that. Time, yeah, life was very challenging. And mm -hmm. uh, when I went to the school and uh, I was bullied by being the girls without a father, or sometimes mm -hmm. uh, where is their father? And I did I couldn't explain where where he is gone, and I was kind of expecting to him to come, but um, I didn't know at that time. Everybody was looking very serious and sad, but in Mongolia they don't they don't talk. They were mm -hmm. just uh, sitting and waiting for something, and uh, mm -hmm. my father. Daughters was there, daughter was there, and so at that time, I I had the uh, I was always thinking that when I grew up, I I need to do to help some other children or someone who is lo losing, uh, whose parents are mm. died away, and I was looking for some uh, profession which profession is uh, suitable for me and. Uh, when I came to the city and study um, university, I started dreaming and dream. I continued my dreaming to um, um, to to find a job to help children, often the children. And then I just uh, finished my first university, and I joined for World Vision International in Mongolia, and I started working. Uh, with the children who 
is orphaned, some of them are orphaned, and some of them are neglected, and they were living in the street. And I started right. my career, working career, working uh, with these children. And um, then I worked for eight years for World Vision, working with those children in the streets and their families and they, uh, the families with their communities. And then, yeah, I decided to improve my qualification and I started social work while I'm working for World Vision. Yeah, so my um, goodness. So your <laughs> adversity from being such a young age of losing your father really propelled you forward to your mm -hmm. education and to work with children who are grieving the loss of family and, and living very difficult lives. That's that mm -hmm. takes some determination on your part to strive from being an, in a nomad community right through to not just school, high school, but getting to university and studying so hard and getting such a prestigious job. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yes. And now I understand your determination to help children has gone even further than that. And you have studied to be an art therapist. Mm -hmm. And not just that, you have started the Mongolian Art Therapy Association. Mm, yeah. Yeah, so... Tell me a little I, bit about that. <laughs> yeah, I found the art therapy is very interesting and one of the very effective interventions and suitable for the Mongolian situation. That's why I decided to study. Because in Mongolia, the, we have lots of social problems. Mm. Uh, for example, if I talk about the children and adolescents, the um, suicide... Um, Weight is so high compared to other countries, which, are, right. which was reported by the World WHO report. And so it's very alarming in uh, our country. So for social workers and psychologists or some helping professionals, it's really crucial to provide very effective uh, response, uh, response uh, to the children who are suffering of uh, feeling alone or bullied or living yes. in condition or suffering of the grief and loss or something and there are several reasons that's why I think um, art therapy is the, one of the best uh, intervention to work with this to prevent people from uh, affected by mental health issues yes and you found that um, that's a um, a suitable modality for Mongolian people in particular. Now, you mentioned that the suicide rate is really high. Do you have, I mean, obviously it's a complex issue and we can't go into all the details for this short video, but um, what would you say the main cause of suicide ideation in adolescence is in Mongolia? Mm -hmm. What do you feel the main cause is right now? Yeah, main cause, there was the two biggest reasons one of them was children are uh, bullied. The children are bullied at the school for mm. being or um, ugly, looks ugly, or um, for being a poor condition or something. Right. Some children are feeling alone. Mm. So that was the biggest reason uh, for children. That's why children leave, drop out of the school, and some of them just attempted suicide. Right. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. So they've really got some uh, psychological pain there around not being accepted and, and feeling yeah. isolated. Yes. Mm -hmm. So is school available to all children in Mongolia? Pardon? Do they have to pay for school or is school provided for them? Oh, school is a pub. We have lots of uh, public school. It's a free for children. And also we have Right, but for, so for the children in nomad communities can come and st go to school like you did come into the city and go to school. Now that must have quite an impact on the whole family if you're mm. working herding with family and then leaving for the city. Um, mm. How do the families manage when the children are ready to go to school and are no, no longer able to live in a nomad community or to herd in the same way? Mm -hmm. Does it have an overall impact on the parents? Or oh, in the countryside, the life 
uh, people's life in the countryside compared to the city. Their life is more relaxing and uh, mm. much better than the people living in a in a city. But right. in the countryside, people don't have qualification. Most of them, they have no qualification, and that's why. And also, um, the late last few years, we have we have uh, disasters and mm. winter very cold. So the herders lost their livestock and people start just migrating mm. to the city and uh, it's very really hard for them to adjust to their city life. Therefore, right. they can, uh, the number of unemployment and alcoholics and violence, family violence mm. and violence is increasing. It really affects children's lives and mental health and the mothers, young mothers especially, looking for the children at home, they are really stressed and also um, the two, two futures at the schools, they, are, they have very uh, stress, they are high stress and mm -hmm. then their lack of active and approach to work with the children who are from the family living in difficult um, right. So it's really not just the children that need to support, it's the family unit as well as those supporting those children in the family unit. I mean, social workers must be quite tired and the teachers struggle. So you're really working to heal the whole community and to create a stronger community. Yeah, it's very, very important in our country. And uh, um, in Mongolia, social work uh, has been developing for 20 years. But there's still be a lack of uh, good intervention to prevent children and family and community and even to improve the policy to uh, prevent and uh, provide uh, effective response to child protection uh, services, mm -hmm. provide effective child protection services. So in that mm -hmm. case, we also need to um, provide capacity building trainings, uh, systematic trainings, for social workers, psychologists, and teachers, and parents um, to, to work with the children and to change their attitude and approach uh, to support children. Right, so it's not just providing a service, but it's building the framework in which to provide a service and changing attitudes and behaviors and values that are long-standing, so social work as you say, is only 20 years old in your country. Art therapy is a real baby. Art therapy oh, yeah. is so very new. <laughs> yeah, and art therapy, yeah, it's uh, art therapy in my country. It's just one or two people, they, they just start talking about what there is a one artist and uh, she talks about the art therapy is the drawing, drawing. Mm. And then everybody in a, uh, and then advocates uh, promotes art therapy as a drawing. So I started competing, oh. like trying to change this um, concept uh, to the public. And but I'm not criticizing. Just uh, I just want to public know about what is art therapy and what's the benefit for the people and why we need to develop this in our country. Uh, so. Right. We are just starting, few of us um, trying to, dreaming and trying to <laughs> study and uh, make hope and make change. <laughs> yes, and I mean, it's the same in most countries. People have a perception of what art therapy is. And some people use the term art therapy without being art therapist. So that misperception for our viewers is, Creating a drawing just because we enjoy it or learning to create a painting is art or it's relaxing and therefore therapeutic, but it isn't art therapy. Art therapy is psychotherapy using art materials as a way to dig deeper and be able to explore emotions and feelings where there is no vocabulary for. And so as you and I know, Art therapists are highly trained professionals who are trained as um, psychotherapists who use art materials, which is very different from artists using artwork as a way to help people relax, to de-stress, 
and to enjoy the process. And there's space for all of it, but we need to be very clear that therapeutic art is very different from art therapy. And what you're designing and what you've been studying so hard for is art therapy. And that brings us to why we're having this meeting is the Proof Foundation has sponsored you and three of your colleagues to come to our next course. So your tuition is fully paid so that you can gain more understanding and a deeper level of a specific area of art therapy, and that is attachment-informed art therapy. Now, of course, you have read and explored what the course is about, and you have agreed to um, enjoy the course and to take part in it, but can you tell me why specifically you would, what do you hope to get from studying with SEAT, uh, sponsored by the Proof Foundation? What do you hope to get from the course? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, first of all, I think I really have to exp express my appreciation for the foundation and the, your um, support for us to study and explore more about the art therapy. And so what I'm expecting from this course is that we, uh, we will improve our knowledge and practice of uh, being art psychotherapists as psychotherapist, yeah, <laughs> and uh, we will learn more about some of the uh, practice and best practice in Canada. And um, I really impressed to read the, um, the two textbooks which you sent, and that was very specific, um, specific, and for all uh, people uh, in like early life and middle life and end of life, that was very specific. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I found that is uh, very focused on uh, for in suitable for Mongolian situation, especially the attachment one, because we have lots of uh, domestic violence issues and children coming with the child protection temporary shelter and professionals have lack of knowledge and skills how to work with those children, infants and preschoolers. And um, I think I'm expecting to learn some of the art therapy techniques, especially express, expressive art therapy. Mm -hmm. So uh, in that case, uh, while we are studying, I think we can develop some program, uh, kind of small program, uh, focusing for the children who come to this uh, government child protection resource center. And then, um, and I just would like to, uh, to do research um, on, comparing the, um, the situation of, or the assessing the situ um, situation of those children who are neglected in uh, violence, um, abused by someone and to come to the center. So which, what kind of art therapy program or intervention is suitable for those children? And the professionals are seeking uh, the best intervention for those children. And um, at the same time, um, we just would like to develop one um, program to test for the workers who are working with these children. So that's yes. uh, my expectation. We will develop program together while we are learning. And I have already uh, one uh, ideas from this book while I'm reading and I have to practice this while we are studying. Yeah, oh, well, that's wonderful. Well, and of course, you will learn exactly that. You'll learn how to use um, the art interventions and creative interventions with not just young people, but in dyads. So if there is a parent, maybe the parent and child can work together or the caregiver if there's no parent in, in the child's life. And coming through children's services, both Lucille Prue and Michelle Winkle have done extensive work with children in, that have been through abusive lives. Um, Lucille in particular did a lot of work in Thailand with uh, children that have been in the sex trafficking trade. So um, really helping them to reconnect to themselves as well as to, to attach to healthy figures and to start to attach to a community. And as we get to the end of the course, we will be looking at attachment throughout that lifetime working right through until our end of days and how important attachment is for that. So I think you will be able to succeed in your goals of 
creating workshops to run with groups of children as well as those support workers that are going to be working with those children as well. Mm -hmm. Now I have one more question to ask you and, and that is really if the Proof Foundation was not supporting you, would you be able to take the course? Of course not, I think, <laughs> but I, I think I would try to find or seek uh, for funding from the government or maybe I was just, if I can find uh, uh, support from you, then maybe I would um, look for and waste my time and efforts. <laughs> but yeah, I'm so happy for your uh, support. And well, and we're honored the Pru Foundation is able to step up. This is the mission of the Pru Foundation to provide uh, art therapy training to people around the world and mental health training as well. And our tagline is attached to life for life. And we truly mean that in the sense of we know attachment is so important to the health and well being of all individuals. And there's so little access to information even with the wonderful internet there's still a lack of um, connection with professionals who can provide guidelines and uh, boundaries as well as provide applicable information for your situation so uh, on behalf of crew and of uh, SEAT we're thrilled to have you in our courses and I just want to add the level of dedication you have shown to take in this course. So for our other students, they will wake up in the morning, have their coffee, get online and join the class. But for you and your colleagues, you're going to be staying awake all night to be on the class. So when the rest of us are going to bed, that will be your time to join our class because our classes are live online. So we will meet in, on camera, as you know, and you have all committed to starting the class at 11 p.m. and staying online with us to close to 3 a.m. And then you're going to get a few hours sleep before you go to work. So it touches our hearts to know that you are so dedicated to the field of art therapy and more important to your determination and vision of supporting young people and adolescents and their caregivers to do what we can to reduce suicide ideation, to improve attachment and to really help people heal. So thank you from us as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you.